You've got a bunch of data and you draw a straight line through the data it should pass through as many points as possible about half the points above and half below you can see here i've got about five points above and about five points below the line of best fit with this line we're able to conclude that this data represents a linear relationship so we say a linear correlation is a relationship where one variable tends to correspond to proportional change in another variable so that was sort of uh, the example we looked at for our line of best fit definition here and we use what's called a correlation coefficient to measure how well a linear model fits data that we're looking at. We use this correlation coefficient R. If R is negative, we have a negative linear correlation, but we look at a scale between zero and negative one and zero to one to measure how strong that correlation is. Okay, so if you've got anywhere in between negative 0.67 and negative one, you've got a strong negative. And then on the other side here, anything between 0.67 and one is a strong positive linear correlation. I just wanna look at a couple examples of correlations. Looking at this first one here, talking about massive ham and the cost, this thing has a correlation coefficient of one. And as you can see on the graph, as the mass of the ham increases, the cost also increases by a proportional amount. It looks like this thing has a slope of one. This is an example of a positive correlation. And this is actually a perfect positive correlation because it's got a correlation coefficient of one. If you go back to our scale here, we have a correlation coefficient of one. This is a perfect linear correlation. We're looking at bottled water sales and temperature. As temperature increases, the water sales also increase. However, the trend isn't as obvious as it was in our first example here. So the correlation coefficient of 0.6, looking back at our scale, we would say this is a moderate positive linear correlation. Number of typing errors versus practice time. There's definitely a pattern here. You can see as practice time increases, the number of typing errors decreases. Since we have a negative correlation coefficient, since it's between negative 0.67 and negative 1, you would say it's a strong negative linear correlation. And lastly, it's very tough to find a correlation between math score and shoe size. These data points are kind of all over the grid here. So we would just say because there's a correlation coefficient of 0.03, we've got a very, very weak, if any, correlation between math score and shoe size. Next thing we want to look at is what's called a linear regression. This is just a process where we determine the line of best fit. I'm going to show you how to do that using Excel. So in this example, a student who's walking away from a motion sensor, D is the distance between the walker and the motion sensor, and T is the number of seconds that have passed. If you're following along with this video, you can open an Excel document and just kind of create this table in Excel. This is the data that we're given. So what you want to do is once you've typed up your data, you can highlight that table. You can go up to charts and you want to create a marked scatter plot. Okay, it's always a good idea to label your graphs and your charts. I'm just going to call this distance versus time. Uh, this looks like it would be a positive linear relationship. But in order to determine with any sort of certainty, what I want to do is do a linear regression analysis on this and see what my R value is. Conveniently enough, Excel actually does that for you. What we do is we just click any point on the graph and right click that point and go to add trend line. And you're going to see this menu pop up. We want a linear trend line. We're going to go to options and we're going to display the equation on our chart. And we're also going to display the R squared value on the chart. Okay. So what we have here is a nice equation for our line it has a slope of 0.5, a y intercept to 1.5 if we were to extend our line. We're kind of interested in our R value, not R squared. So if we take the square root of that, I think you get 0.9882 approximately. We just created a scatter plot relating distance and time. For part B, we want to determine the strength of the linear correlation. Our R value was 0.9882. That's pretty close to a perfect positive correlation. In order to determine the equation of the line, the best fit, that's this equation right here. This just tells us that the walker covers a distance of 0.5 meters every second. That's the slope of our line. The walker is traveling 0.5 meters away from that motion sensor every second. We've got a y-intercept of 1.5. That just tells us the walker started walking 1.5 meters away from the motion sensor.